Hello, this is Dick Gooding, and I'm your host for uh, Veterans Remember. And uh, this is uh, another opportunity we have to talk with a, a veteran from Hopkinton. And uh, this evening we have uh, Merrill Stratton, who's a brother of Roy Stratton. And uh, uh, we look forward to uh, learning a little bit more about uh, the Korean War. And uh, Veterans Remember, as you know, uh, gives us an opportunity to have reflections and remembrances uh, of our soldiers, some of whom have been in wars and others who have not been. And it's a very important piece of history that we hope that uh, you'll involve your children with. And uh, this, again, is a, uh, a series that uh, uh, HCAM is very pleased to be able to present. And uh, I look forward to uh, working with so many of the veterans. And uh, Merrill, uh, it's a pleasure pleasure to have you here tonight. Thank you. And uh, you know we're going to learn a little bit about uh, your experiences with yeah. the Korean War, and also to learn a little bit about the Korean War itself. Uh, maybe you can share with us uh, a little bit about uh, uh, where you grew up and, and uh, how you got into the service to begin with. Well, I was uh, born uh, November twenty fifth, nineteen thirty. Born on the street, how can I? I was born at home. Born at home. Yeah, born on the table, kitchen table. So even though you live, even <laughs> though you live in Westboro now, you're a real townie. Oh yes, never, <laughs> never take that out of us. <laughs> in fact, they say I'm a true son of Westboro now, but you know, I'm both towns. <laughs> yeah. Did you go to uh, the famous uh, Stedgy Prep? Yeah, how can I? Class Mount 49. Home? I had a picture to take over today, but it was uh, my class. Uh, Paul Nordstrom and uh, Jimmy Pentonay, Bob Ryan, Frank Arena. We had a, a snow carnival. It was in '48, and uh, Paul and I and the class we rolled snowballs on the front of the high school lawn, and we made a uh, Donald Duck sculpture. The Donald Duck sculpture. <laughs> and we had the skiing that day, so we had our <laughs> skis and our togs on. You know, that was the time the square box shoes and. The old, in the old clamps, you know, and uh, we went down the skiing down in uh, Western Nurseries. That's mm -hmm. where the, the kind of a snow kind of skiing was held. And uh, we put a day in there. I think I broke a pair of skis. <laughs> I'd like right. I didn't break my neck. <laughs> well, your family uh, has a, a proud heritage of uh, service. Yes. Uh, your brothers yeah. and your father. Yeah. Maybe you could uh, explain a little bit about that. Well, my father went in, uh, he was born in Sherman. And he moved to Ashland, and he moved over. And his father managed the farms. They were uh, uh, one of the big farms in Framingham, uh, owned by Fitz Business. Uh, Mr. Fitz owned a big farm, and uh, my grandfather, uh, my father's father, he uh, uh, managed the farm for Mr. Fitz, and uh, he, that was his uh, work work line. Then, and uh, he moved to Ashland, and then. My father used to come up to Hopkinton, you know, where my mother lived, and met her up there, and they married, and then uh, they lived on Pleasant Street first by the Terry's, and then they moved to, uh, they had a chance to get a house, rent a house on Mount Arman Street, so she's lived on that street 60 years, and the house is still standing. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, now your my father, father went in the Navy, yeah. 1920. And he, he became a signalman, right, on the USS North Dakota uh, battleship. The first one to use oil it was the first uh, from the coal. Is that right? They, they built her, and she built in uh, New Jersey. And I guess she was broken up there earlier. And they, uh, he escorted the, uh, in the ship, they escorted the Turkish ambassador, who died in this country, right, to Turkey. And uh, they uh, put his body in a cask of uh, alcohol, and uh, other other spirits, and uh, to preserve them, they went to Constantinople. They toured uh, uh, Turkey and so forth. But anyway, they brought the Turkish ambassador home, and they said, "Well, the time the ship got there, they opened the cask up, would take the body out, and there was no there was no alcohol left." So the Marines drank it. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's that's my father's tale. <laughs> that's <laughs> my brother was going to the Navy. I can remember him telling my boy and Alvin, you know, you go in the Navy, keep your nose clean, and don't volunteer. And don't volunteer, <laughs> other than to volunteer to go in the that's Navy. That's right, yeah, yeah. So they, they went in, 
and 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 God bless them. They uh, they came back and survived. My my brother Alvin, we lost a while ago in an accident in Ashland. Uh, a tractor overturned on him, huh. and he went all through the uh, North Atlantic. You know, always out, like destroyer, always out at sea. He's based in Ireland, and they won. And they, it was an enemy invasion, and he come home and he got killed in an occupation. Huh. He was uh, he was lifting logs on the, the tractor for a uh, seed lawn in Ashland, and he went over an embankment. And they had a boy station there to watch him because he was moving the tractor, backing it up. And there was a, uh, they told us when we went down, when I went down, it says he, he went over a foot and a half embankment. It was a three foot embankment. Wow. That's the guy. We went down to get his things, you know. Mm -hmm. So then it's like he's to square with us. But anyway, and so he, uh, he was, uh, otherwise, Roy and Alvin and Roy Sir in the Pacific, they both came home. They were fortunate in God's. God's well, they they survived it, you know. Well, we have a, a picture of the Stratton men, yeah. uh, your father yeah. and the, yeah. the three sons. Yeah. Uh, that uh, all of you can can find on the Hopkins uh, Veterans Photo Gallery. Yeah. And I encourage everyone to uh, take a look at that. Yeah. And uh, uh, we'll also be able to uh, show a picture of uh, of Merrill Stratton. As a young man in the mountainside, mm -hmm, yeah. and um, yeah. uh, I think we have that picture right now. I guess this was in 1952. Yeah, uh, a picture of yeah. you, and uh, yeah. we'll have that uh, available right now uh, for the folks to yeah. take a look at. That was in the jeep. The jeep. Yeah. Picture. Uh, uh, no, it's a picture of you. You standing up, uh, standing up on the mountainside. Oh. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can tell us now a little bit about uh, uh, your basic training. You you, you started off uh, where down yeah. in uh, Arkansas? Yeah. Well, the the boys from uh, forty nine, you know, the class forty nine. Frankie Arena, Jimmy Petsley, Bob Moran, myself, Johnny Mannion. We said we're going to enlist. They had a two year enlistment because they needed men in the Korean War. So anyway, they said, well, we'll go down and enlist. So we all go down together, right? Well, <laughs> two, uh, they said three of us, uh, two of us uh, uh, showed up, and the others, they didn't, they chose to wait. So we went in, Charlie Mann and I, you know, and we got shipped to the same place, Camp Chaffee, Arkansas, right? And we said, boy, it's going to be nice down there. The Southwest going to be warm and winter, right? And the place is just like this in wintertime. It's just the very same weather, the damp, cold, snow, right? And in the summer, it was different. It was just like Korea. And that, of course, the winters weren't like Korea there because Korea was much worse. But anyway, it was similar. So he said, boy, <coughs> excuse me, boy, this is going to be nice. We're going to be nice and nice and cool and all this in the southwest. We went down and got out the went by train, you know, train all you know, to the Mississippi, across the Mississippi, down to St. Louis, and finally we arrived at Fort Smith, the Arkansas, in the camp. 15 miles, chugging the, chugging in the gate there with the old steam train, and they were burning coal. You know, the guys opened the windows; it was so hot. <laughs> we got, they looked like jackals. <laughs> anyway, so we get out and they said, "Line up out there." You know, he said, "Stand up." You know, come out. You're going to have an orientation, and he said, and then you're going to go to barracks, and then you go to bed, lay down. You're not going to do anything today. It was 113 degrees. Wow. So we can see why. <laughs> so we can see why now. Now, did you go straight to uh, Korea from, uh, from yeah, Camp Yeah, we got to, uh, after 14 weeks, so that place is around. We came home, I came home two weeks leave in December. And uh, 1st of December, we, we chartered a plane, America flight. It was a, a C-47, all painted blue, white and blue, you know, snazzy. Just came in from a uh, flight, and they landed and picked us up at... Uh, Camp Chaffee Airport, the Af airport down there, and uh, we flew to Boston, and uh, it was cold, a little bit cool then. So we, we had two weeks home, and then on the 14th of December I had to leave to go to catch the plane, because we chartered it to and from, to fly out to Seattle, and we flew out to Seattle on this plane. We got, up, we got just outside of uh, 
Chicago, uh, especially Atlanta, Chicago here. We get outside uh, Elmira, New York, or halfway between Elmira, New York, Chicago, and the, the engine was spouting flame, one, one, one engine, right? <laughs> and so the tire pilot had to turn back, and he landed snowing like a bugger. So we put him at Elmira, and they put us up for the night, and we stayed there, and then we took off after they fixed the problem. And we hit O'Hare, then after O'Hare, we, they put us up in Chicago. It was about 14 degrees below zero. The wind was blowing, you know. And of course, a lot of the streets in Chicago, there were, it was cobblestone, you know, all ice. Right near the wind was blowing, and it was, it was pretty tough. So stayed there a couple of days, went to Seattle. We were two days overdue. And Christmas Day in Seattle, at Fort uh, Lawton, we. Uh, I was serving up in the office of Mass uh, KP, waiting on table. So I was serving the table, serving the juice, going along. And this, uh, the officer's wives and daughters and all the nuns. They were having a good time, and eating a meal and so forth. Says, so one of them said to me, as I poured the drinks, says, and how are you enjoying your Christmas? <laughs> I says, not very well, thanks. <laughs> and whatever they said to him. How are you enjoying your Christmas? I said, well, what do you expect? <laughs> anyway, so after we stayed there, about two, two or three weeks at Fort Lawton, and the base is all hills. You've been, you've been to Fort Lawton if you have? Yes, I have. Oh, yeah? yeah. It's someplace. Isn't it? Fort Lewis is across the way. Yeah? Right. Seattle is up and down, right? Right. You know, all the half breeds and everything else. There are the Indians, <laughs> Eskimos. <Yes, sir. laughs> Only wine, wine and beer, no whiskeys. Beryl, yeah. if, uh, if you could share with us a little bit, and for the folks in the in the home audience, and Merrill's yeah. been actively involved with the American Legion in Westboro for mm -hmm. a number of years, and has been involved with uh, a number of organizations, right. uh, specifically with Korean War veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, very few people are familiar with the Forgotten War, the War for Korea, and uh, uh, Merrill has been kind enough to bring a, a few maps with us. Uh, which are going into the phases of the Korean War, which I'm going to yeah, uh, present. <laughs> we'll show on the on the uh, yeah. on the screen right now, okay. and, and perhaps you can uh, uh, walk us through a little bit uh, about yeah. the uh, about the Korean War, okay. uh, starting off with the first yeah. phase of the war. All right, uh, I'm going to give you a little rundown. It'll be as far as I know. I haven't touched this stuff for quite a while, yeah, but I'll never forget a lot of things about it. Anyway, so this is the first phase one, which is the invasion of that uh, on June 25th, 1950, the North Koreans, with a signal from Moscow, said, "That's okay. You can go take them, the softies over there in Korea." They won. The, they had been drilling and been fighting over getting uh, Korea uh, joined because they were separated after the war. Russians took and they drew the parallel, the line where all the mountains were, easiest way. And they just put a map, put a line 38 parallel, and they said, this is the north and this is the south. And, then, and the Russians got the north and, the, and the, we got the south. So the difference was that the Russians prepared their side much better. They prepared as a whole army, a top, top notch army, right? A million men or more. We, we, we treated it as a police. We held the uh, Koreans down because we didn't give them the enough equipment, excuse me, uh, for, uh, Tanks, guns, anything. They were a police force. They had, you know, weapons, uh, pistols, and rifles. And they were facing the North Koreans, who were really standing out, a big army. And they came over in the morning. They had a big barrage of artillery, 4 30 in the morning of June 25th, and they came flooding across, right? Well, they overwhelmed most of the units. There was one Korean unit that didn't, didn't run, or did, couldn't, couldn't stand, couldn't fight. There was one unit of Korean, it was a top, top unit because he trained his men, and he was a North Korean himself, but he came to the South, and he joined the South. So he was on the South Korean side, so he, he was able to advance while the North Koreans were, were ranging South. Anyway, the, uh, that was at the invasion, at, uh, and that was on the uh, anniversary from uh, June 25th, 1876, was the Battle of I wonder, if they, I wonder if they decided this was going to be annihilation of us, just like Custer was, you know. And that's uh, that's about the size of that. And they pushed down pretty, pretty Yeah, quickly. they went all the way and, and pushed us down to Pusan, outside of yeah. Pusan, which is and way maybe down here. And, and, uh, and yeah. then we go, I hope yeah. this is phase two. Yeah. 
-huh. And then this is all within the first year, most of the action took place. I mean, the action was taking place all over, mm -hmm. and behind the lines everywhere. But most of the action, you know, the army's intact, pushing back and forth. So, Poussin, they push to Poussin. They threaten to push us in the sea. But General MacArthur, when they had the staff meeting, they said, we're gonna, we'll, we'll fix that behinds. He says, I propose that we cut off the, the North Koreans from their sources of supplies. We're going to invade an Incheon, which was the worst place you could ever. And they all said, hey, you, you're gonna be nuts. Listen, there's eight foot tides, there's mud flats, and there's big embankments of, of, of walls they built. The, the Marines had to go up, take up over the walls with ladders, and, and even before they got on the field of battle. So they said, you, 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 we can't, it can't be done. Everybody said MacArthur. MacArthur said, that's gonna be done, we'll do it. So they finally did it. They finally caved in to MacArthur. He said, this is gonna be it. And they, they did the invasion of Unchan. They cut the Korean forces, the uh, North Koreans. They took the pressure off Pusan when, when Walker, General Walker, could then gather the forces and start moving his army together and, and, uh, and, and chasing up the North Koreans back up to when they tried to get by the Incheon landing, but they didn't, they couldn't. And uh, what fleed had to stay and were annihilated. Now, uh, uh, things changed rather rapidly, I understand. Mm, right, and, uh, right. And the Chinese communists yeah. became more and more, more involved in the war? Yeah, they... they uh, and that's the, the next phase? Right, but a lot of political things were happening, you know. They said, uh, our, our uh, diplomatic court said, uh, you know, hey, uh, the Chinese are saying, you know, if you're gonna go across the 30th parallel, they don't like us fighting uh, with the South Koreans, you know, uh, uh, aiding them in the first place, but if we push across 38th parallel, the Chinese say they're gonna fight. And so, Truman says, that, well, he says, uh, what, what do you think of, what do you make of it? And MacArthur said, you know, well, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be held back by that. I mean, they threaten a lot. They can't do much against us. We're in full force now. We got every, all the nations, all the divisions, he says, and we can take on anything. We got an air force, so whatever the reasons. So they, they pushed the Chinese across 38th up to Chosen Reservoir, which is up north. And then, in the meantime, General Allman, who was General MacArthur's aide, General Allman, he, uh, he, he had the 7th Division, the Marines, and a couple of Army divisions, and they split because the mountains, they split the, split the forces. The Marines were on one side, 7th on the other side, which is, a, a, is a, you should never do. You don't split your forces because that's, the Chinese can take them on piecemeal. And what the Chinese did, they'd hide in the day, uh, they'd hide in the day, and they'd, they'd, they'd fight at night. They would engage their forces at night. So they surrounded our forces, and the Marines had a, and the Army had to withdraw. And they came back, and they, the Chinese pushed it back, back beside, past Seoul, Seoul was taken, lost and taken, and they, they pushed it back to finally we stabilized here. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, we pushed up to the 30th parallel. And, and that, uh, that then brought on yeah. the next phase, right? Yeah, we pushed them back and crossed the 38th and then the line stabilized. And uh, I was up around the punch bowl, that's where I was, and uh, it was an extinct crater. And the thing was about 20 miles, 30 miles across. And it was a big flat area, an old dyed out crater. And if it ever gets active again, goodbye Korea. <laughs> There's a big bowl, just like a big bowl. It's called the punch bowl. There's a punch bowl in, J in Hawaii, but that's a burial ground. That's another crater, the Victor American burial ground. And um, that, that's, uh, that's where the line stabilized, and uh, we got the Chinese to the table, and we got the North Koreans to the table, because the North Korean forces practically failed to exist. And they also their guerrilla forces also failed to exist, because uh, over that time, we annihilated most of them, but the Chinese, of course, were we started really hammering them, and our Air Force really did the job on them, you know. And the final phase really is the stabilization and the, the, the right. final yeah, the uh, line along the 38th right. parallel, right. which right. is the way that it's divided right. today. That's right. Correct? And I said, well, how did they derive, derive at the 38th parallel? They just drew a line. The, the, uh, the staff or whatever, the diplomatic corps said, hey, this is going to be the 38th, and that's what it is. They agreed, the Russians agreed to that. So. 
is what happened. Well, certainly the uh, uh, the war, uh, the forgotten war, the war in Korea, yeah. uh, was uh, a bit of give and take. And right. uh, certainly when the Chinese right. communists became right. involved, that right. uh, ratcheted things up rather significantly. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just don't even understand what... Uh, what happened in that war? And, and no, uh, for some reason it's called the Forgotten War. Some reasons, it's what they give the reasons for was not the real reasons, because there's more behind it, more to it than what is expressed. They have, um, they said, well, it came because World War II ended and people were tired of war, okay? And then uh, this course, World War II came along, it happened that the whole country got behind the, the media, everybody got behind that. There was a white war, you know, all stuff, fighting against the Nazi Germany and, and Japan and all these wars. But Korea, it came at the end and, and uh, uh, the draft, they had the draft, and the draft was good, but I said, you know, everybody went then. But uh, Korea, it remained kind of silent because boys who came home fought in Korea, and bloody, it's the bloodiest war in history, really. They, they fought in Korea, and they come back home, and, and, and the guy says, oh, hi, hi, Mike, how you doing? Haven't seen you for a while. Where you been? He said, I've been to Korea. I said, gee, that's no kidding. <laughs> you know, but see, that was the way. People drove their cars, people ate the butter, you know, everything had ration for the one that pressed, it do your bit for the, you know, the cause. In the Second World War, everybody does their bit. Everybody was involved. But see, we only had a, a segment of the public involved in it. And there was such a debacle in, in Korea, a debacle, if you want to call it, that Koreas were lost overnight. I mean, the officers really just uh, lost it. Uh, they had, s uh, from the end of World War II, in Japan occupation, Japan was a place to go. Man, we get duty in Japan, that's where I want to go. I enlist, right? So they enlisted. They want to go to Japan. It was great. It really, really was, you know. And uh, hey, that's the way to serve. And they had, and Japan, Japan was the three islands. You couldn't get a cohesive training ground. In other words, up in the north of Hokkaido and the south and, and, and the mainland of Japan, you couldn't get the army forces to get together. They were all separated. So, they didn't fight together, and when they got to Korea, they weren't together, right? Mm -hmm. And they had to hurry up, get stuff, they had to get uh, a lot of equipment from the South Seas, from the Second World War was left over. They even dredged some out of the water, I guess it was pushed in there. But they, they got all Second World War, we Second World War uniform, Second World War stuff, trucks, jeeps, you know, reconditioned stuff. And how we got all this equipment is because Japan, Japan had nothing. At the end of the war, Japan was prostrate. But when Korea came along, Japan was the anvil. Japan was the manufacturer of all the stuff, reconditioning. That's where they made their money and got their start. Hmm. Yeah, that's, very, very that's where they got their start. Now, you were, uh, uh, for a while, you were uh, on a uh, prisoner of war island. Where yeah, you Kojido, yeah, yeah Kojido. Could you yeah. give us a, uh, just a brief understanding well, of that? I'll give you a painted picture. Uh, I, I hit uh, Pusan, and I went to Rebel Depot. That's where the replacement depot is, all the men that come in. I was signed out, right? Like, go to bed, good night. Get up in the morning, fall out, get your assignment, all right? Uh, this man, he called the name of the sergeant. He called the name of says, uh, Sergeant Doe, uh, uh, Corporal Doe, or Private Doe, whatever. This, you're going to the 27th Infantry Division, right? Yeah, all the 27th Infantry Division, I read the names, and then you read the names, right? And uh, that was the Wolfhound Division. And then everybody say, woo, wow. How I shut up. <laughs> anyway, so that's what he called it out. I went to the fifth. I said, what the hell is the fifth? I never even heard of it, right? It has a very illustrious, uh, right. what do you call it, uh, 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 reputation. Yeah. Anyway. It's a small division. That's what it's, it's a fifth, uh, fifth regimental, regimental combat team, and it, it's actually a small division. It has everything that a division has, only it's smaller. Right? It, it's an unattached outfit, which is you don't get any replacements only until everybody is satisfied. You're on the last list of everything, you know, and guns and, and equipment. You know, you get a scrounge, scrounge, and like raid the midnight stores. Anyway, that goes. 
So I said, where's the fifth? Well, the fifth, you're going to get on a, the mail boat, and you're going down south. You're going to take about a, a two-hour trip, and it's down off the south coast opposite Pusan, right, in the China Sea. That's great. So it was five of us, <coughs> five of us went down there, and you get off the, off the uh, mail boat, this one lung, I think, boom, 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 boom. And uh, I said, well, what kind of thing is going to be down here, you know? Yeah, maybe there's some good luck. Yeah, all right. So we, uh, we get, up, get off the boat, you know, we're a little just and get our duffel bags and we get out and wait in the dock for the jeep to come to pick us up, take us up the outfit, you know, because they were back, they had withdrawn and, and getting replacements and doing uh, training down in Kojido from, they just came down off the line. They had three months on line, which was a record, I guess, for the outfits on line. And uh, so we, uh, so we, wait, I went to a driver that picked us up and he was a guy from Texas, he was, my name was Tex, what else, right? <laughs> so, and he was a hot rod, he was interested in cars and civilian life and he continued right through the service time. And he got in the Jeep and we were flying out of there, you know, and the other guys were picked up by another, another group, I guess, because I was the only passenger. And uh, we go down, and there's only a couple of hills on Koji, and the west is kind of flat. I crested the hill, and I look, and you can see all the, um, you know, and there's all buildings, there's long, long buildings, uh, like, you know, uh, probably 500 feet long, like 100 feet wide or whatever, where it was a tattered dimension, but they were big. And, uh, and so we mixed around with barbed wire. The road is, the double barbed wire, each side is a ditch by the road, and so you really, you feel you're like your prisoners as well, you know? <laughs> well, Merrill, that's just <laughs> fascinating. And uh, we really thank you yeah, here yeah, at sure. uh, Veterans yeah, Remember yeah, yeah. Uh, for sharing uh, not only a, a yeah. very nice commentary yeah. of uh, yeah. of the K Korean War and, and then a little bit about what, uh, yeah, yeah. what your participation yeah, was. Yeah. So I want to thank everyone yeah. for joining us yeah. on, on Veterans Remember with, with Merrill Stratton. Uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you the next time. Thank you and have a nice night. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure.